Brooklyn is quickly becoming one of the hardest places to live in New York City, and residents are being forced out. Why is that? <laughs> New Yorkers are fuming after already seeing the biggest rent hike last year. People cannot afford the apartments they have. Brooklyn rents are up 25% year over year. There's a supply shortage, there's a much greater demand, and people are priced out of the housing market. Tenant advocates argue any hike will increase poverty and homelessness. What's up, man? How are you? Good. Good. Come on in. Awesome. Oh, this is it right here? Yeah. Yeah, so this is your typical Brooklyn apartment. What you're about to see is what you can typically expect living in Brooklyn. But before we see what Brooklyn renters are facing, if they can even manage to find an apartment, it's important to understand why most New York City residents can't even afford to live here in the first place and are being forced out. It's a bit of an enigma to everyone that the prices have, the velocity and the prices have gone up, up, up. And part of that has to do with the fact that potential buyers have sat out because rates have been high. Now, New York City is the most expensive city in America. And this year, the average price for an apartment rental in Manhattan, 56 hundred dollars a month was what it peaked at and part of the reason for that is that it's very hard to buy a house if you want to buy a house the mortgage rate is going to be through the roof so most people are waiting to see if rates come down and they've got to live somewhere so they rent which puts even more demand on an already strained rental market that doesn't have enough apartments now if you want to rent a fifty six hundred dollar apartment you've got to make 40 times the monthly rent. That's how much money that is. You better be working at Google, you better be in finance, you better be at a big law firm. It's hard to get a job that even pays that much. And if you can afford to rent that apartment, you're earning more money than 89% of America. And that's why many aspiring New Yorkers in the past once looked to Brooklyn for an affordable place to live. For many years, the New York City real estate market fluctuated greatly based on location. This was prior to work from home, which is relatively recent. And normally the closer you live to a subway station or a popular part of Manhattan, like Midtown or downtown, the higher your monthly rent would normally be and the smaller your apartment would be. It's been a pure location game for a long time. And you used to be able to move to Brooklyn, save a little bit of money on rent in exchange for more time commuting to certain parts of Manhattan because we've got to cross a bridge or go under the river in order to get there. But since 2020 and the advent of work from home, all of that has changed. People who used to want to live in Manhattan because they could get a small apartment near their office and live a convenient life now no longer need that convenience. So they're looking at certain parts of Brooklyn where they can get a comparatively larger apartment and that's what's pushing prices up. In that same report, it also revealed that Brooklyn rents are up 25% year over a year. A 25% rent increase. That is bonkers. Most people don't get a 25% increase in pay. And if you live in Brooklyn and your rent goes up like that, you might not be able to stay. And that's why people are leaving. Look at these prices. $3,300 for a studio, a one bedroom, 38. Look at this chart. This is what rents have done in Brooklyn. That's insane. If you moved in here, you're not still living here when it's up here unless your income also went with that curve. And this is the affordable part of New York City, not the unaffordable part. And this is still unaffordable. This is a cool place. Very cool, man. One bath, one bed, one bath, thirty-one ninety-five. Comes with a private backyard too. I'm guessing, huh? Yeah, it does, and it's a nice one. A little wet today for being in a backyard, but man, that is absolutely nice. There's no street noise because we're not facing the street. Yeah, it's a rare layout because it has three rooms, but it also has a separate living room and kitchen. I kind of like it. So normally the kitchen would be here. Yeah, typically. Split units. You got one of these in every room. Nice. It's pretty nice, yeah. Alex, this looks like a recent renovation. Is that the case? That is the case. In your opinion, is this bigger than a lot of apartments in this price range? Yeah, absolutely. This makes a great living room because you have the outdoor space here. There's gonna be a lot of foot traffic. No place better to spend some time than right here. I guess there's no power. Not today. When people move out, there's no electricity. Yeah, this is a great spot for a real kitchen. Oh, this area right over here? Yeah. It feels like one of the few apartments where you can have people over Without too many challenges, I guess. I'd say you're right. Yeah, the actual bedroom is over here. It's pretty nice. It's pretty bright, even on a day like today. Yeah. What size bed do you think this is gonna fit? Queen, pretty easily. Queen? 
be our first floor, but I see lots of window bars. That's nice. It's slightly elevated despite being on the ground floor, so you're not actually on the ground. And before they had the split unit ACs, you can fit an AC window unit right in here. Oh, that's why it's like a box. Exactly. What's the size of this room? Roughly 80 square feet. Yeah. Queen bed, I guess, went right here. Definitely. Oh. Look at that. It's actually it's like a Manhattan walk-in closet. <laughs> These people across the street are probably paying way more than we are over here. Oh yeah. $31.95. You gotta make what, 40 times the rent for this one? Yeah. So 127,000 has to be your income. Yeah, Brooklyn rents might be sky high right now, but they are not as sky high as Manhattan. This is only 31.95 right across the river. A place like this is almost double the money. In Manhattan for this price, do you think it would be anywhere near this big or no? No. Not at all. Sometimes unsustainable. It, it is unsustainable and it is a huge factor when you talk about all the other things that we're paying more for. Mm. So it seems like what's been slowly happening over the years, the slow pricing out of former residents in Brooklyn has only accelerated recently. And now that inflation for like groceries and gasoline and basically everything else is happening on top of massive rent increases, you have a greater amount of people whose incomes aren't keeping pace with the local rents than ever before. And there is a 19.2% poverty rate in Brooklyn. And the rent to income ratio for people in Brooklyn is over 30%. Typically a person whose rent to income ratio is over 30% is gonna have a tough time paying for things like medical expenses, auto repairs, food, clothing, other basic necessities. And the other crazy thing is here in Brooklyn, rents are rising so fast that even if you sign a long-term lease, like let's say you sign a two-year lease, when you go to re-sign in two years, rent could be 30, 40, even 50% higher than what you just signed at and you're still gonna have to leave. So there's like no protection for anybody. And if moving to New York's affordable neighborhood isn't really a good long-term proposition, I don't know how anybody's gonna be able to stay here for more than a few years. Dude, this is really good, man. We got decent looking appliances in here. I like this design. They did what they could despite having a wall right there. You got some windows, you got some cabinets. It's pretty level, you have a fridge that opens the right way. I mean, whoever put this together, it's not stupid. It's actually a pretty smart design because it doesn't take up hardly any space. Water's really good. I like everything about this, to be honest with you. I've seen some apartments where they block the windows to add maybe like an extra cabinet or something here, but I'm glad they kept it open. You could cook with company here. Yeah. And you wouldn't bump into somebody. Not at all. And look at these drawers. You could have stuff on both sides and you could close it without a catastrophe. You could put a little waste basket in here. Oh, and it's clean too. This is where all the problems in an apartment are usually hiding and waiting for you. If the rent on this were to go up 25%, what would it be? It would be about 4,000. So this is is a free marketplace, but if it were stabilized, would that offer you some protection from rent increases? In the short term, yes it would. But in the long term, this may become unaffordable. There's about a 3% increase they could give you each year. In 10 years, who knows what that becomes. <laughs> Their emotional pleas resonated in the room. Tenants trying to convince the city's rent guidelines board on Thursday night to not increase their rents. This meeting took place over the summer when the rent guidelines board was meeting to discuss what the new rates would be for people who live in affordable apartments. Those rents went up too. Basically in New York City, you've got two tiers of housing. You've got free market apartments where the rent can be whatever the landlord decides. And then you've got stabilized apartments. Now these are apartments where the landlord doesn't control the final amount of rent. The city controls it. However, the city still has to come up with a rent that works for both landlords and renters. I should not be paying $991 a month with three roommates in a rent stabilized apartment. Now, yes, a stabilized apartment is still much more affordable than a market rate apartment, but to folks who need a stabilized apartment to remain in New York, any increase at all could be so much that even they have to vacate. Now, one woman said she was paying $900 to live in an apartment with three roommates. The new guidelines allowed for a 3% increase, roughly, and that would mean she pays an extra $27 a month. Now, you might not think that's a lot of money, but remember, in Brooklyn, the rent to income ratio is already over 30%. So people are already spending more than they should on rent. Every dollar amount in the wrong direction could be catastrophic for people and for families. 
Also, the cost of living in New York is so much that even a $100,000 a year salary, once you take into account the overall cost of living, that gets whittled down to about $36,000 a year when compared to other major US cities and other parts of America. And Brooklyn residents aren't making $100,000 a year on average. If the average price of an apartment in your neighborhood is above what the average person can spend, it's pretty obvious why that's not gonna work long-term. Unless you make some drastic changes to how you live your life. As nice as it would be to keep this as one bed just for yourself, you can have the amount of money you're paying each month just by adding a second roommate. You have a room after all for them. So then this would end up being like your kitchen slash living area. Yeah, you can fit a couch there pretty easily. And this is a queen size bedroom with a double closet. Oh, I see what you're saying. Maybe they're not saying use it as a one bedroom because there's the backyard door. Yeah. But you could. You could. This is a good spot for a bed right here. Perfect. And I guess you could go to Home Depot. You can get some paper shades for the window right here, like close it. Yeah, and if you put the bed there, you could have a nice home office setup over here. You have the out with the floor. How big of a couch do you think you could get here? I'd say a four seater at least. A four seater? Yeah. Okay. But I guess that then means that the TV has to fit over here. Yeah, you'd probably mount it over there. So instead of getting a big clunky table and putting it here to complement your couch, just get a standing bar cart, eat here. You're going to save so much space. And I guess that would double your counter space because it's next to the kitchen. Exactly. So I guess it just makes me look at this room a little bit differently. Yeah. Because now your whole life is in 80 square feet. Yeah. You don't have like your bed and stuff in here and your office out there. This is everything. By adding a roommate, you also only have to make $60,000 to live here. It halves what income you need. Oh, so instead of 120, now you're at 60. Yeah. I guess for someone just starting out in New York, this could be the only option. How long do you think somebody would live in a room like this? I'd say at least two years for the price you're paying. Do you think it's worth it to rent something like this and kind of downsize your life? I think it totally depends on your situation. If living in this apartment will help you achieve something that you can't achieve living anywhere else, then yeah, it's worth it. Most people that rent something like this, they've got like a job, they're trying to get an education, yeah. they're starting a business, they've got some reason where they need the apartment other than just, I love it here and I enjoy paying for it. I would hope so, otherwise you're wasting money. Two thirds of the apartments in New York City are occupied by renters who don't own. And as rents go up, the apartments people can afford just get smaller and smaller and smaller and tinier. Now this apartment is a two bedroom apartment and I live here with my family. But it's really tiny. Tiny kitchen. Oh, you think my kitchen's a mess? Let's see, you make breakfast for two kids yourself. Your kitchen's gonna look like a tornado. This is also very New York. We don't have enough cabinet space, so inside the oven we keep pots and pans. And to be honest with you, this place is already a little bit too small for us. The rent was $4,000 when we moved in a year ago. It is stabilized. The rent went up to $4,200. We also pay an extra $300 a month for parking, so it's $4,500 all in for a place that we can't stay in forever. And when I looked at renewing the lease here, I checked to see what other apartments were available. And other Brooklyn apartments with two beds and two baths were $6,000 a month if the building also had an elevator. And a stabilized apartment is supposed to be an affordable apartment, but if the rent's stabilized and it's stabilized at a level that's already unaffordable, it makes sense that most people are being forced out of a neighborhood like this. If this is the cheap place, if this is the stabilized place, that extra $27, that matters. We don't need a ton of space, so we could probably make it here for a few more years, but when they get bigger, we're gonna either have to throw out all of our stuff, or the four-year-old is gonna have a bunk bed in this room, and my hats are gonna have to go somewhere else. And no matter what part of New York City you live in, you're probably asking yourself this question, how long am I gonna be able to stay here? And if I can't stay here and I get priced out, where am I gonna go? Especially if I've already gone from Manhattan to an outer borough like Brooklyn, there is no Brooklyn if I'm already in Brooklyn and Brooklyn's unaffordable. But what do you think? Is there a reason to move to New York City? Would you move to New York City? And what do you think I should do? See you in the next video.